Our lives are powered by liquid fuels. Natural gas, crude oil, gasoline, this is where they come from. But what if they could come from here? What if we could produce not just electricity, but fuels and plastics from a carbon neutral source? My name is Sean McGrath, and my ICON's thesis is an effort to bring us closer to that goal. The key to this progress is cellulose. It's the main component in the bodies of plants, making it the most abundant organic compound on the planet. It's full of the kinds of hydrocarbons that are full of useful chemical energy, but right now we're not using it for much more than making paper. Why is that? Why is such a vast source of energy going unused? The problem is that cellulose is a polymer. All those useful hydrocarbons are linked together in a way that makes them difficult to refine and separate. So far, we've only really come up with two good ways of doing that. One way is to do it chemically. Put cellulose in a tank with the right enzymes, acids, or even bacteria, and it will break down into a variety of organic products. If you're clever, you can even control exactly what those products are. The biggest problem with this approach is that it's slow. For cellulose processing to be practical, it has to be fast, because we need a lot of fuel. There's another way, though, pyrolysis. Basically, you heat the cellulose up until all those bonds that hold the polymer together break. This is cheap, easy, and fast. If you've ever sat by a campfire before, you know this already. The problem is that it's more difficult to control the products of this reaction, and some of them aren't very useful. If we could learn to better control the output of pyrolysis, we would have the best of both worlds. A fast, cheap process that turns an abundant feedstock into exactly the kinds of organic compounds we're looking for. In order to develop that level of control, researchers are turning to Raman spectroscopy. This technique involves bouncing a laser off of a material and examining the spectrum of the reflected light. This spectrum contains information about the structure of the material as well as how it's vibrating. Scientists at WPI have found that if you take the Raman spectrum of cellulose as it's being heated, you see some strange stuff including some things that suggest the cellulose might be breaking down at temperatures well below its melting point. This is where I come in. I'm conducting simulations of cellulose at various temperatures and calculating how small changes in the molecular structure might be responsible for the changes in the spectrum that we observe. This could tell us how heat is deforming the molecule and perhaps suggest better ways for us to control cellulose pyrolysis. This will bring us one step closer to a future of sustainable fuel.